Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, I'm going to start a new series where I dissect Logic Pro and explain in detail the purpose and function of each of the main sections and windows of our beloved digital audio workstation. This series is aimed at beginner Logic Pro users, as I'll be giving a broad strokes overview of each of the sections of the DAW and its uses. However, if you are an advanced user, stick around because I'm going to pepper in some hidden tricks as well. All right, no better place to start than the top. And in Logic Pro, that is this light gray bar across the top of the screen, better known as the control bar. This is a very important section of Logic Pro to master because it contains many useful functions for all workflow types, but also because it's really customizable. The number one thing to know about the control bar is how to customize it. Simply right click anywhere in the blank area of the control bar and choose customize control bar and display. In this customize menu, we can use the check boxes to toggle on and off the view of a whole host of control bar features. And as you can see in this menu, there are four main groups of controls in the control bar. There are the views, which is split and occupies each far side of the screen, the transport, the section that includes the play and record buttons, the LCD, this center dark section that displays the position of the playhead and relevant session settings like BPM and key, along with many other things, and modes and functions, which encompasses these buttons to the right of the LCD, as well as the metronome functions and the master volume slider. Now with so many options to discuss here, I'm gonna split the control bar into four separate videos. So let's start with the basics and look at the different views of Logic Pro. The buttons in the views section of the control bar are quick ways to display or hide sections of the Logic Pro main window each with their own purpose and functionality. Here we have them all off. And as you can see, the main window is only displaying the control bar, the ruler, the workspace, and the track headers. This is the simplest form of the Logic Pro main window. And we can add on different sections by enabling the buttons in the views section of the control bar. The very first button we have opens or closes the display of the library where you can load patches and presets for the selected instruments or plugins. The next button opens or closes the view of the inspector pane, which is this section here in between the library and the main window. In it, you'll find the two inspector channel strips, the track and region inspectors, and the subject of the next button, the quick help menu. The question mark button in the control bar toggles on and off the view of the quick help menu, which is displayed at the top of the inspector. Quick help is super handy, especially if you are just getting to know Logic Pro, as you can simply hover your cursor over anything inside of Logic and the quick help menu will display information about its use. Alternatively, you can open it in a separate window by double clicking the question mark button with the inspector closed. The final of these first four buttons opens and closes the display of the toolbar. Now both the inspector and the toolbar are very powerful and slightly complex sections of Logic Pro, and both of those will definitely be subjects of their own videos in this series. Get subscribed down below to be the first to see those when they come out. Moving on to these next three views buttons, we'll start with this one that looks like a little knob, which opens and closes the smart controls. The smart controls will be set up based upon the track header you have selected and which plugins you have on that track. This window allows you quick macro level control over the sound of your tracks. So for example, on this drum kit track, we can quickly adjust the balance of the drum kit pieces as well as the amount of compression that is applied overall. In my opinion, the smart controls are really helpful if you're just moving to Logic Pro from GarageBand, because this smart control view and workflow will be very familiar to GarageBand users. Moving on to the next button, the one with the faders icon, no surprise, it opens the view of the mixer. The mixer is, in my opinion, the second most important section of Logic Pro after the workspace, as it's where you'll find all of the channel strips that comprise your session. Again, the mixer certainly warrants its own deep dive, but for our purposes here, there are two things you need to know about the mixer. 
First is that it can be opened like this as a section of the main window, but also as its own separate window by coming to the window menu or by using the keyboard shortcut Command 2. If you're working with only one screen, it's very helpful to be able to open the mixer as a section of the main window. But since I have the luxury of two monitors, I like to keep the mixer window open on one screen and the main window on the other. The second thing to know is that the mixer as a section of the main window can be opened and closed with a one button keyboard shortcut. And that is the X key on the keyboard. In fact, most of the views controls have associated one button shortcuts, but if there's one to memorize, it's this one. It is such an important section of Logic Pro that you always want to have it one click away. X opens the mixer. Never forget it. The next view button, the one that looks like a pencil, is the editors button. And this one will toggle on or off the view of a few different sections, depending on what region type you have selected in the workspace. With an audio region selected, it will open the audio track editor. And that allows you fine detail control over the editing of your audio regions. In the tabs at the top of the audio track editor, you can also access two other types of audio editors available in Logic Pro. The audio file editor, which allows you to make edits to the underlying audio file that is saved to your hard drive, not just the audio region. This is beneficial when you want to make a change to one region and have that change reflected in all of its copies throughout your session. Also in the tabs, you have access to the Smart Tempo Editor, where you can analyze and edit the tempo analysis of a particular audio region. If you have a MIDI region selected, the Editors button opens the view of the Piano Roll. This is, in my opinion, the third most important section of Logic Pro, after the main window and the mixer window. Like the mixer window, it can be opened as a separate window with the keyboard shortcut Command 4, and it can also be opened and closed as a section of the main window with a one button shortcut, and that is the P button on your keyboard. P for piano roll. Now there's two you won't forget. And as if that wasn't enough ways to access the piano roll, you can also simply double click on a MIDI region to open the piano roll in the main window. Lots of ways to get to this important section where you can edit your MIDI performances. And just like with the audio editors, we have different tabs above the piano roll to access further MIDI editors. We have that infernal score editor, don't get me started, and a MIDI based smart tempo editor. If a session player region is selected, the editors button will open the session player editor, where you can customize the parameters of the session player's performance. And if a sequencer region is selected, it will open the step sequencer. One final note about the editors view is that if it is opened without a region selected, different tabs are shown at the top where you can navigate to the piano roll, score, step sequencer, or session player editor. And you can create regions on the selected track simply by clicking inside any of these blank editors. Moving all the way to the right side of the control bar, we have the remainder of the views buttons. These are placed to the right because they open and close four specific sections that all live on the far right hand side of the main window. And only one of these four windows can be open at a time. First up is the list editors. And inside this section, we find the MIDI event, marker, tempo, and signature lists, where you can create and edit any instances of those in a list style format. Next up is a personal favorite, the notepad. In the notepad, you can make notes for your entire project or just for specific tracks. Just switch the tab to track and select the track header for the track you wish to make a note about. I use the notepad all the time. The project notes are a great place to jot down lyrics, production ideas, or to-do lists. And the track notes are the perfect place to write down any analog gear settings associated with that track for easy recall. Following the notepad button, we have the Loops browser, where we can search and audition the entire Apple Loops library, along with any loops you have manually added into the untagged loops folder. The biggest advantage of using Apple Loops and creating your own tagged Apple Loops is that they'll automatically sync to the key and tempo of your project. 
It also allows you to take advantage of the powerful search tools here at the top. However, if you have a loop or samples library that's not loaded into Apple Loops, the final views button is where to look. It opens the browser and in it we can search the files in our project or all of the files on our system. For example, I have an entire hard drive full of samples that are not loaded into Apple Loops and I can use the all files tab in the browser to navigate to my hard drive and audition my samples. When I find one I like, I can simply click and drag it onto the workspace. Hopefully it's clear now that each of these buttons in the control bar allows you to customize what sections of Logic Pro you want open and have available to you at any given time. And just as a bonus tip, you can save different configurations of these windows for easy recall by using screen sets. All you have to do is press one of the numbers across the top of your keyboard. Let's use two as an example. Then set up the screen for a particular workflow. Let's go with the piano roll and the inspector open and everything else closed. Then we just have to hit another number. We can go back to one in this case to save the screen set we just created on two. Now we can carry on messing with the setup of the screen, doing whatever we're doing, changing anything. And then when we need to go back to that saved setup, we simply hit two on our keyboard and boom, there it is. You can actually save up to 99 different screen sets. To access screen sets 10 through 99, simply hold shift on your keyboard and then press the two numbers in sequence, one after the other. So shift and then nine, nine for number 99. And those are the views of Logic Pro. As is a theme with Logic Pro, there are about five ways to do most things. Not only can you use these control bar buttons, but as I mentioned, there are keyboard shortcuts to view all of these sections, as well as a view menu at the top that has them listed out. So my advice for beginners that are feeling overwhelmed by the amount of options of how to do things in Logic Pro is just to learn one way. Pick the way that is the easiest for you to remember, learn it, and then move on to something else. There's really no need to memorize every way to do everything. I really believe that all of these options are in the program to allow users to design their own perfect workflow by selecting the methods that work best for them. I hope you found this video helpful. If you are brand new to Logic Pro and would like some more personalized instruction from me, I'd be happy to help you out. My email is always in the description box below. Please feel free to reach out to me at any time with any questions you have. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.